Unbearable Wednesday, guys. This is Hiroto Kai. We have a special guest with us today, the ama amazing Sango. Uh, he makes some awesome wearables, and he has a little lesson he wants to teach us today. So let's tune in and see what we can learn. Yeah, thanks for inviting me, Dan. Um, so today I'm going to cover some, I guess it's a bit more advanced um, weight painting for your wearables than what's been uh, covered previously in other videos. So uh, first we're going to start off looking at a dress and how to get that rigged up so it works nicely with the legs. So first I'm um, going to import the base mesh for the female avatar which can be found on GitHub. Um, the, the whole repertoire of all wearables is up there if you, are, if you ever want to see how things are made. A good way to have a look at that. So once we open that up, so we've got the base. We're going to be concentrating on the lower body today, doing the dress. So press tab to switch between ob edit and object mode. Uh, so you can start editing the, the mesh. What, what I'd normally do is you can either extrude from it or add to it. Um, from this one, I think I'll probably add to it so I can show you how to pin stuff to the right um, vertices for the hips and the, the ankles as well. So we'll go add, curve, go for a circle, switch into the top view, and S to scale down. So we can get that about hip shaped. And a bit of a scale on the Y axis, so S and then Y, and then bring that in a bit. And we've got a relatively good shape there. And we'll scale it up a bit so you can see it. So from that we can just convert that to a mesh. Probably do getting rid of a few of these vertices as well, so. So you're just getting rid of every one of uh, every other one there? Yeah, every other, just so it's not so high poly, because we've got to keep an eye on uh, triangle limit. Um, Absolutely. We've got, always got the to work towards those limitations. Um, the main parts is uh, 1,500 triangles. Um, I think that's mainly for the top part, though, because uh, the lower part can be done with a lot less, because the thing is to take up so much of the geometry. Exactly. So think, uh, you can right click dissolve vertices on them, and then that's a bit lower poly there. So after you've done that, you can swap, swap to the front view, press A to select all, and then E to extrude, and you can pull that down. And, uh, when it's pulling down, if you press the Z key, then that's going to lock it to the Z axis. So you can just bring it down a bit. Press S, scale it out. Do that again. So you've got a decent shape. Let's just again ease extrude and that's the scale. I want to bring it back out a bit. So I'm going to click this thing here, which um, enables X ray so I can see through that mesh that we're blocking some of the vertices over here. Want some like that. Oh, that's a cool done. tool. I've never used that. That's awesome. Yeah, that it helps a lot. Let me do that. Make sure you've not got any that you shouldn't have selected. And then 
press G to grab, and then Y to lock on the Y axis. Now I can bring that out a bit more. Do that again for these hidden words. See the wall. G to grab, Y to bring it on the Y axis. There's that shape. So we want that to line up exactly with this hip uh, joint here. So it can work seamlessly with any of the wearables. So to do that, what we're going to do is select. Well, first I'll select that. All the stuff that we don't really need right now. And then press H on the keyboard to hide that. And then select the legs and the, the dress we just made. Go join. And then tap to go back into edit mode. And once we're here, what we can do is uh, we're going to pull all these vertices into these ones. And to do that, what we're going to do is just select We'll select this one and then that one. Press M to merge them, and then we're going to want to merge them at the last. Now we'll just keep doing that around. Merge them at last. At Look last. at that. Last. A master at work right here, guys. Look at this. Amazing. So I just went in the extra view to uh, find these vertices which are falling behind the uh, behind the match. Select so, them, um, G, Y, and bring them up just like all the other ones. Now we can select them, and go again, and at last, and now jump back in. At last, and the last two. Oh, did we, did we lose you, Sango? Yeah, sorry, my son just came in. I just had to. Oh, no, <laughs> you're fine. So, yeah, so now, um, that's merged the mesh we just made for the dress up to the hips. So obviously now we've got a lot of mesh that can't be seen because it's covered by, by a dress. So we need to go through and select what we don't want. So on, on the dresses that I've made, I'll put it down to probably about this line. And then if you looked up the skirt, there's nothing here because it's just it's a waste of triangles if, you can't, if we can't see anything there. So we can uh, either go into this mode and press three. So to switch between vertice mode, edge select and face select, I normally just use uh, the one, two and three key above your letters on your keyboard. Um, it's just like a quick select. It speeds things up a lot more, less uh, strain on your wrist going to the top of the screen all the time. So if you press three there and you're in the X-ray view, and come through and select them like that. But, uh, sometimes it can be a bit hard to see. So um, select them a bit faster. You can just hold control and then select one further along. Oh, one, one, so hold control 
and then click it, and then that's going to loop select from the one you last selected up to the one that you just selected. Just speeds things up a bit. And you can hold shift on the next one, the next line down, and then keep with the shift and the control. Um, you don't even need to hold shift, you just keep holding control and it's not going to get rid of the, the other ones you selected. If you select the one wrong uh, face, you can just go control Z to undo that and then it'll go take your selection back to the last one you had. You can just keep going like that. When, um, so when I go down, I always hold shift just so I don't, because if I didn't hold shift, then I would lose my selection. And then after that, it's just control and the last. Shift there and then control. Well, it might be faster just to take it off the X-ray and then you can just box select. If you're not if when you drag your cursor and it's not box selected, you can just press the W key and that will swap through your different select modes through here. So once it's a square, then you'll be able to drag and box select. Back to X-ray to select the ones that I've missed. It does think about the triangle count, but it does teach mm -hmm. us to be optimal. That's what I really like about it. Yeah, we've always got to try to do it, do it in as, as little as possible. Exactly. Uh, they, They're teaching they us to be design. good designers. Yeah. Mm. Once you got them, just press delete or or the X key and then faces. And that's gonna save a lot of geometry. Just keep an keep an eye on your geometry, you can just select this uh, overlays tab and click statistics and then you've got your triangle count over there. Alright, now we've got the dress, we're gonna need to oh, I'm just fix it. I need to wait it now. So if you have any holes, you can just select the two of the edges and then press F to fill it in. So to go back to object mode and to unhide all the stuff that we hid earlier, you can press Alt and H and then fly the thing back. So you can select that. Make sure it's uh, parented by control P, and then I'll go with empty groups this time. And once we've done that, we can press the forward slash key to isolate the selected things. 
Again, just with the dress. So now we can start going into weight gain mode. So press this little triangle down here, and then you can get all your vertices and groups. So we want the hips. Hips needs to be red all at the top. This way, um, it won't split apart, and sometimes people will have areas where their lower bodies and their upper body looks fine when they've had it stood still in the T pose in Blender. But when it's on the armature, when it's animated, they start pulling apart and making gaps. But that's because the weight, the waist, um, the hips, uh, bone isn't weighted properly on the lower body and the upper body. So to do that, we'll go on, make sure it's on draw on the strength 100. And when that passes over the vertice, when you're clicking down, that's going to paint that red, which means full effect of that bone. So how, uh, how did you do that again? Like, how did you, like, just get the top of that being red? So you make, you go into where you got your object in edit mode, you go into weight paint mode. Yep. And then you're on the your draw search. tool. And make sure you're on avatar hips. Yep. So that means you're, you're weight painting for the effect of the hips burn. Oh, okay. And so then, it won't go over. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So on here, make sure it's on draw. You can click the brush here and then when you hold the clip down and go over the vertices then it'll paint it in red oh nice okay we're going to need to bring this down a bit more probably to the second vertice Lower the strength down a bit so you can get some. So the dark blue represents zero and the red represents one, and the shape between uh, in between those two variants. So red means it's going to affect it 100%. As soon as that bone moves, it's going to move the, the mesh which you painted red with it the exact same amount, whereas if it's yellow, then it's a bit less of a, left, uh, less of a pull and so on until it's no pull down on the red. So the hips aren't going to affect down here at all. If it affect up here 100%, down here it's probably only about 20%. So the reason why we're blending that off is so it's not so much of a sharp joint between the two. So you don't get a natural pause in the in the mesh when it starts moving. Just jump a little bit more. All right, so now we're gonna left go to left leg up on this right column and we don't want that to affect any of this top line the only thing that these top vertices should be affected by is the hips and that should be red there if anything else has any influence on it it's not it's going to start pulling that gap open again Just gone into the x ray room mode so I can see where the knees are. Because we want to bend quite strongly up there where the thigh would be. Because this is left, left up leg means the thigh. So this is going to be where that affects.
And when you first start, it, it can seem a bit daunting, but it's just trial and error really. Once once you got the rough idea of how you painted out, it's just going to be testing it with the movement of the armature, making some more adjustments. And yeah, this is definitely bench. an advanced maneuver, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Most yeah. most of the advanced things in 3D, it just means it's more time intensive and you just need to concentrate longer for and yeah, see that, how he's just fast. feathering it in there. You just want to feather it in. You don't want to make these solid lines. You know, he's really doing an amazing job about feathering this in here. Look at that. That's amazing. And this is where you bridge your wearables to going from good wearables to amazing wearables. You can really do some different stuff when you learn these different tools in Blender. It definitely helps, you know, if, if you're, if you have that more natural feel in your, in your fabrics and stuff, then yeah, it's going to give you that, that edge. Absolutely. So now we're just going to do the same with the right leg. So is the draw brush the only one you recommend using for the weight painting, or is there any other brushes you like to use? I mean, it all depends what you're doing really so at this point i will be using the brush but if i was to go if i was to go down and do uh, ankles then i'll be using this gradient tool with that on 100 percent, you can just go straight up like that and that's perfect ankles right there oh wow look at that i did not even know that was a thing that's awesome <laughs> and you can use that same so if you went to subtract you can use that to get rid of stuff the same way you can wow you can sin and stuff so it, all, it also it all depends on what you're doing at the time really thank you thank you no worries we are truly getting a wizard's class here <laughs> this is amazing stuff Are you using your mouse or do you have like a drawing tablet? I'm just using my mouse right now. I do have a drawing tablet, but for this, you, it's not it's not that. Um, so it's it's only going to make make effect every time it passes one of these vertices. Mm. So if it was a high res mesh, then I'll probably be using my tablet so I can get that fine movement. But with with That's that being fine, so like low far apart, yeah, wow. the mouse is fine this kind of stuff. Trackpad probably okay. as well. Bit quite simply. And you're just clicking, right? You're not hitting any other like alt keys or anything? Yeah, that's right. Just um Yeah. Left click. Left click, alright. Look at that. Beautiful. This is like the insider builder, like you know, we you can work off the base mesh or you know you can start from ground zero like we're doing here and it's truly magnificent to see the whole process of how this is painted <coughs> so now left leg that just means the lower part of the of the knee so because we've got already got some mesh underneath, and that's the set um, set weight painting from the actual base avatar. So that's all, all correct. We can try to imitate that now on the on the lower section of the dress. So if we see it's red up to here, which is just about where it starts, and then orange to this one, and then it cools off to about here. So we can just, in fact, we could use a gradient here as well. So we can go gradient tool, take this front up a bit. Wow. Yeah, that's much. 
And then we can use the same tool again. If we go on the brush and then click here, subtract, go back onto the gradient, we can just erase those parts that we don't need. So it's going to let me cut up. Yeah, so then you can use the gradient tool again to get rid of those parts on the right side because we're only doing the left right now. And then come back in with the brush to soften off the edges. So now that's done, we can go back to object mode. Press the forward slash key again to get out of the set of view. Now what we can do is select the armature, click on object mode and change it to pose mode. If we, click this, if we select this uh, orange square over here and then go into the viewport display in front, then we'll be able to see the armature in front. Select it easy. So in pose mode, start bringing that up, testing out the mesh. So you see here the knees protruding. So we can make some edits and we can keep it in the pose mode and then see the edits in real time. So to do that, we'll go object mode, select the address, weight pane. Oh, wow. Oh my God. And then there we go. Yeah, I'm freaking out too. I didn't know you could change the weight painting during a pose. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is it, this is good it stuff. It gives you that real time feedback and it. it's so useful to be able to see the effect that it has right there and then. We can do the same for back here, subtract it a bit. Wow. So. Look at that, it's just coming right back. Mm -hmm. Then we select the right leg again. And add that in. This time I'm just going to use a brush to add it in. Add a bit more to get this a bit smoother over here. Yeah, it'll be around, it's a bit better. So 
of it is a bit of a fold, which means we need to have more of a gradient up there, at the front of the hips, to eliminate this kind of fold in there. So to do that, what I'm going to do is switch back to the pose. So if you go object mode, select the armature, if you're on the object data properties tab, then you can go to rest pose. Then select your dress again, wait for the thing. In fact, while I'm at it, I'll go object mode, right click, shade smooth, just to give us more of a view. It's still all the old, old bits of mesh that I didn't take time to clean out, but obviously for your wearables, you want to make sure there's no random floating mesh bits as well. So back into weight paint. And we're looking at this, this part of the hips now. So we want to pull down the strength a bit, just add a bit more of a gradient. Just subtract and use the gradient tool. So we'll give that a go, back to object, select your armature, pose mode, make sure you can see it by going to object properties, viewport display, and then checking the in front box. So we need to kick back on this one, pose back. So here it seems maybe the thigh is a bit too strong on the top. We're going to go object mode, select the dress, white paint, and then drag it up, try to reduce this down a little bit. Look at that. Okay, that's a bit nicer there. So then once you've done this, you're going to take it into Peace Central Land, test it out with um, with the in-world test and do some dancing and whatever. And then you'll see some parts you're going to see some, some strange folds or maybe the knee's going to poke through when it's, there's a certain pose. So then, then you have to keep coming back into Blender, weight painting it a tiny little bit, and then testing it again until you've got it all right. But I think it's, it's possible, just just takes a bit of time, no matter what your level is, as long as you're determined to get it done, I think it's, it's pretty simple once you get started. Just a tedious job, so you feel it's harder than it is, you know, trying to put in the work and you haven't done. So that's for the dress. I was going to maybe show how to do either a backpack or a longer jacket. Which one do you think would be more appropriate? Whatever one you wanted to do. Okay. So yeah, we'll do backpack then because then it's a bit of modeling as well. All right, so I'm going to select the upper body. So at the moment, we can't use backpacks on their own as a wearable. We've got to include them with another um, wearable part. Most people use the uh, upper body part because it makes sense to all the. So, first, you can look at your. I'm going to turn this up on so I can see properly. All right. So when you're making additions to stuff, you can always look at lines that are going to suit your 
for your project. So here we, we run a backpack and there's some straps here and blades for us already, just in the geometry from the where we have the bra. So we can use that and we can edit it to so the rest fits where we want to go. So these end about here so we can have it coming down a bit more. And once you if you if you are confident in painting out your own weight paints again, you can save time by in your modeling by deleting half of your mesh. So if you go on X-ray mode, delete half your mesh, delete vertices, go into your modifiers, add a modifier, add the mirror modifier. Now everything I do on this left side is going to mirror onto the right side, so I don't have to do each side individually. Oh my god, this is a huge time saver. Yeah. So what we're going to want to do now is turn off the X-ray so we can see a bit better, and we're going to want these straps to come a bit further, a bit more around here, and join up to these ones here. Or in fact, no, we want them to come down across here to the lower back where the backpack will be. So to find out where where the backpack's going to be, we're going to make a backpack. So I think like a small, small bag will do. So select the faces, press E to extrude. Back, undo that control Z, and we're going to turn on clipping mode and then do it. E to extract, and then that's going to keep it joined at the center. So, the reason I chose these ones, it, it kind of looks like a, a bag already, so we just extrude these four out a bit more. And we've got a basic bag shape. So, if you work smart, then you're going to save a lot of time rather than trying to create your whole backpack itself and then join it on and just build it straight out of the mesh, if, if you can. Yeah. And then to get rid of these shading issues, and just select the edges you don't want it to smooth off. Right click, and then mark sharp. And you got that kind of view. So now for, now for the straps, you're going to want the straps to come across down here, joining about here. So we're going to use a knife tool. To use that, you just press K on the keyboard when you're in edit mode. And then you get this green box. And that's where you're going to input the vertices. So if, if it's red, that means it's locked on another vertice. So you're not going to be making another one. You're just going to be joining onto that one. So if you want to Join on from here. Bounce about here. And yeah, sometimes this will happen. I think that's because when you first load in the base avatar mesh, it's not all joined together. So join that together. You just go well and apply. Now if we try that again, that should work. Yep. And then get the other one coming in. Then what normally when I make insertions I'll clean up the mesh a little bit. So I wanna get rid of these lines here. Select those edges. Right click and dissolve the edge. Yeah, that just makes the mesh a bit cleaner and we're not wasting triangles as we go along. I'll get rid of this as well. This truck comes down the front. So we can even use these lines here. Get them coming across. 
five pounds at the bottom of the bag. And again, five pounds of black. So now we can cycle those bases for the rest of extrude and it's going to throw it off a little bit so we can fix afterwards so G to grab it and then can move it back in place I'd probably do that I'm going to undo that and we're going to do it in sections through those ones. The reason why I'm doing it in sections is because it's throwing it all off when I was doing it all as one because it's going off in different tangents all across the axis. So I'm just selecting the faces which are all, all on the same, well facing relative the same direction and just extracting them and then I can join them up afterwards with that same technique we were using earlier, which was the, the M key to merge them. So we can set them both M to merge them in sensor this time. So this one's coming off a bit here, so on these ones we're going to merge at last. Down here, we can just select this edge, go into top view. wireframe so I could see it through the mesh and then moved it into the bag just to see it off that stuff. We can do the same here. Move this time go inside view. We can drag it down just to make sure we got that thickness to it so it's going to be all across and because we went through and we put on mirror mode that's going to do the same on the other side as well. We're going to go across the base of all these. I'm going to make that sharp as well up with the shader. Mm -hmm. Right click and then mark sharp again. Okay. Now we've got some straps. Because we extruded them, we're going to have to paint in the weights again. Something going on here, let me just figure it out. I'm just going to cut across there and try and dissolve this one. Let me do that. I'll just pull that face out. Alright, 
so now we can go weight paint mode. We're gonna have to look at all the mesh around it and try filling the gaps really. So back down to the triangle. And this time we're gonna start on start on the neck. So we can see here none of those would have been where where the straps are. So we can skip that and go on to the shoulders. Obviously we've only got the left here, so we need the left shoulder. There we go. So on all of these, um, we're gonna have to apply our mirror modifier and then start to lead in the right side to subtract gradient go that through to halfway and you have to check over everything we extruded and that will seem fine now And then you just have to mimic that onto the right shoulder. And then you can just literally go through. So you can just keep going between that and the other one and just match it up. And uh, so if you were to think, if you were to like keep on extruding and stuff, then eventually it gets to a point where, oh, it seems to be working out. Yeah, sometimes when, when you extrude, it won't have the weight painting on top of it. So in that case, you just have to obviously see what's either side of it and then fill in the color between. So it ends up like this. So if you wanted, if you wanted uh, your upper body to come down a bit more, so like a long jacket or just a baggy t-shirt or something, to do that, what you have to do is the new model. So in edit mode, just deselect the hands. Make sure in x-ray mode so you get the back facing ones as well. Switch to facing mode. Make sure you deselect the neck parts as well. I just go forward slash there to have it just on the singular view of the one object that you selected. So if you select any of the parts, press forward slash on the num numpad and then it will just zoom in onto that one object and get rid of the other so you can see more clearly like it. And just to undo that, just press the same key, the forward slash, and everything comes back. Make sure we've not got the bottom selected. Alright, once you're in that, you can just scale it a bit. And what I'm also going to do is 
select all of it apart from the hands. I'm going to press P and separate by selection. That way it's a lot easier for me to maneuver these parts around without selecting everything. So I'm going to select all the arm, tail. Oh, yeah. So again, every time you load in the face avatars, we've got to go through and weld it together. And then we can just drag that tail X. X and then G to grab it and then back on the X and just line that back up again. Then down at the bottom. So for this one, I'm going to. So firstly, it needs rejoining back up to here. So I'm going to drag it down to where I want it. I select all bottom vertices. For this part, I'm just going to drag them down rather than extrude because it was quite a short face compared to the rest of them. So just to keep the flow, fetch that one down a bit more. And then we can extrude from there. Bring that down a bit. Maybe scale it out a bit as well. Just for some shape. I'll just scale these up a bit as well. Alright, so normally the way you would uh, weight paint this a t-shirt would be to have the bottom red but because we came below the waistline we have to do it a bit differently so we can go in and select hips so this is not what we want right now otherwise the legs are always going to be going through this so what we want to do is make sure just this center part's red and then we're going to join these should join these back up first, actually. So to join it back up, we're just going to go press go. Tab's going to edit mode. Press two to go edge mode, and then select the bottom edge and the one we want to join it to, and press F. We're just going to do that all the way around. Mode. So the waist is only going to need full um, strength on this inner part and this red line here. So we're going to go on subtract, use this tool, get something like this going. Even a bit more. And then we're going to have to have the legs affected as well. So when the legs come up, it's going to push the t shirt away. So for this, we want the 
left leg up. So this is going to affect down here. Go on, add. So you can see the hips coming through a bit here, so you can just grab it back a bit. G, grab it, and then wind things up. So you've not got any clipping from the legs underneath. And back to the weight thing. as well, just do the same. Now we can test that, see how it is. We've got this blade in front. Then again, one needs to work till about here. <laughs> Obviously that's not working so well. So what we're gonna to have to do is go back and look at where it's where it's going through and where it's folding. Then you gotta kind of visualize where we're gonna put all the other stuff, where we're gonna mark all the all the new weight painting that we're gonna solve this with. So what I think we need is a bit more influence further up from the leg. Adding a tiny little bit to the bottom as well, so it's not not totally ineffective at the bottom. So we just want a tiny bit of effect right at the at the edge up from the hips. So once we try about that, we can give that a go. So what's happening here is the underneath is protruding through because there's one more face. There's two faces to the one face left on the inside. So we can try that without the inside of this. So we can go through edit mode three to select the faces and hold control and then press face across and then quickly select all those in ones 
actually or x on the keyboard and then spaces you went over good You see, so that makes the t-shirt work a bit better as a baggy t-shirt. So it's going to move with the, with the thigh of the legs rather than just being stuck right at the bottom of the hips. So the more you work into that, the more it's going to look better. It just takes a lot of trial and error through. And more than I can fit in this hour video. So with these kind of skills, you can start making all sorts of wearables. Because if you just use your creativity, you can use the same effect with other parts of the of the clothing to make things that haven't been done before, you know. So just because your armature is the shape of the person, you don't always have to fix it. So you can like um the robot I've made recently. I'll get that up to show you for a second. Like um so the rule is if it's moving on one axis. You can, so if it's rotating just on the x-axis, you can have something really far out on that x-axis and it's still going to move in exactly the same way. So I took advantage of that to make this character with wide set legs. Um, just find it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so this is available for, for sale in the decentralized market. Well, it's not for sale yet, but it's it got um, been minted. There's a few in game, just me and two have them, and um, Flashbrick as well. He's got one. Oh so my God, one. Zango! So, um, so here you, I've gone wider set on the legs, but it still works because the legs are only going to be moving on the x-axis. So if I select that. Can you show the stats and see how many triangles you have total? Yep. He optimized like crazy here. I can already yeah, tell. Again, it's amazing. Oh my god. We're gonna have to see you I wanna see this demoed a little. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I'd love to up. see it in the so, world real quick. On this one I've got four thousand four hundred and thirty six triangles. Wow. That's um, amazing. So I think the body was, body was yeah, it's just around one thousand five hundred. Um, I put the feet and the legs together into one piece because they're wide set. There's no point having just the feet out because there's not going to be interchangeable with any of the wearables. Yeah. So we joined them together, and that's the feet and the legs together. That's that was another one thousand five hundred triangles. And I think the head was about about a thousand, one thousand two hundred. Wow! So it's a three piece set. I think I've seen Zoo wear it at the club event. Yeah, yeah, you would have. Yeah, so you could mix the head with any other part. The body cuts across. In fact, yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll load it up and show you in a second. Yeah, I'd ones. love to. Um, it, it's is it for sale yet? It's not for sale. I'm not sure. I think we're going to do like an event and then when we release it for sale. Oh, okay. You need um, to let me know when this goes for sale. I'm spending all my nana. Uh, yeah, sure. We took a, lot, took a lot of time to make it. So yeah, it's amazing. It. But you see the legs still work how they should. Oh um, my God. Look at the freaking hose scrunches up. Yeah, we got, we got the hose scrunches up. So you can... You do all sorts with the armature, you just got to get creative with it. Um, don't be afraid to kind of push it to its limits and explore what you can do with it. Because, um, with the same concept here that I've got the legs wide set and they still work. Maybe that could work with something else. Um, maybe you could have well, arms move on a much more, they move on more axis than just the legs. So it might be a bit more difficult to set back an arm and maybe have four sets of arms or something, but I don't know. The head can, probably could be probably, probably hey, do that. Singa, can you show the texture painting for those texture maps again? For these ones? Yep, sure. 
Oh my god. You're a friggin' legend. That's incredible. Wow. I split this out into a few different parts. Um, so we've got the feet and the lower part. So obviously we're limited to two textures and two materials per item. So because I joined the legs and the feet together, I still wanted to have the a higher res. In, so because I'm joining that mesh together, there's a lot more mesh to fit on the UV map. So it would in, result in a lower resolution texture when it's on the model. So I split that into two. I had the, the feet up to, I think it's about up to here and below, which is one, one texture map which would be this one. Oh, nice. And then wow. there's the hips to here, which is another one, which would be this one. May I ask Body how you, like what your technique was behind doing those textures? So I I'm making that wearable that, myself yeah. and I was actually struggling last I finally figured it out. I had to um, export PNGs onto my iPad and I was using Procreate to hand do some of my own textures. But Hey, that's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I wonder, Senga, how do you do yours? Okay. So for, for uh, projects like this, I'll use Substance Painter. Oh, um, Jesus. Yeah. I just got introduced to this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, to get um, textures like this with this much detail, um, you want Substance Painter. Um, on Photoshop, yeah, I'll use Photoshop still, and I'll still be making stuff in Photoshop to put through into Substance Painter to to make it work. And um, yeah, it all depends on the style, really, because some wearables they do call for that just block color style. And if you're doing block colors, then I'll say there's no point really going into Substance Painter. Then um, Photoshop would be all you need. But if you, if you want to get some a lot of detail in there, so like wear and tear and dirt and stuff, and you can paint that directly on within um, Substance Painter. How much is sub? I got the free trial, but how much is it? Do you know? Yeah. Um, so, well, it's I'm in the UK, so it's pounds for me, and so I think it was like 160 pounds, so about 210 dollars maybe for the year. Okay. Um, yeah. Buy it. It's not. You can't get it monthly. I think it's a, one of the only okay. ones you can't get it monthly. But, yeah, um, I might get it. Rare. Yeah, I might have to video chat you later. I'm working on something with Last Room, and I, it has to do with Substance Painter, and I'm having a little mm -hmm. trouble with something. Yeah, man. Sweet. Yeah, I always have to help. Sweet. Awesome. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah, just holy crap! So yeah, even with the, with the head here, obviously there's three heads. That's all on the one bone. Um, and as much as the as the central and lets the head move, it still works, you know. Oh my God! Look at the joints move. Oh. Wow, you're giving me like oh, I'm gonna. I have some ideas now. Yeah, man, that's it. You can get more creative than what you think. Like, I'm hoping soon we can start changing the actual um, armatures ourselves. Exactly, yeah. Adding more bones and stuff. Yeah, more bones, different shapes. So you can have, like, I don't know, a lot of characters that I like have, like, short legs and long bodies, you know? Yeah. Like, cards. It'd be fun to have a little, like, group of midgets running around, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the lollipop build. Mm, that'd be possible. Yeah, I can show you this how this um, robot works in game if you want. Yeah, we'd we'll love to it. see that. Yeah, do some yeah, emotes and stuff. Like the head explode. What does that look like with the three head? Oh wow! Yeah. yeah I'll show you. Probably looks like it's surveying the world. Mm. This is amazing. 
This is honestly one of the coolest wearables I've seen. Oh, thank you. Like, this blows every freaking wearable out of the water. Like, this is truly freaking wearable magic right here. That yeah, it took a lot of work to do it. Yeah, I'm sure. It looks like... Oh, my God. Optimizing the textures as well. That was a big job. Getting them down to be small enough. Um, just like in in data size rather than pixel size. Obviously, we've got to keep to 512 by 512 pixel images for the textures. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to figure out the best ways to chop stuff up and put it in the UV maps. Um, and how many UV maps to have as well. Uh, pixel density, that was something that had to be thought about with them. So where I was going to split the textures and stuff. So that, uh, the upper body, that's got two textures on it. So Oh, okay. So gray, that, that was one. Uh, and as well, add that into. Decentralized taking a while to Oh wow, look at that. This, yeah, this is another one that I use that um, weight painting techniques that we learned today so for the dresses and for this type of Oh so, my god. We go, we go back to different stuff. All right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do a little dance for us. Head explode, please. Oh, it's frozen for me. One second. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> so many tabs open. <coughs> that, that's me. <laughs> oh my god, look at her move. Oh my god. Holy shit, that's so awesome. Incredible. Oh my god, I mean like, holy Christmas. It's perfect. Thank you. The texturing is very impressive. This is like, oh yeah, this is insane. Yeah, right. it's a lot, lot easier than it was back when, like, I learned when I was in my teens and then did a lot of 3D for a while. But back then it was literally, you have to, all, all, it was all done in Photoshop and it was so painstaking when you just had to do it on those 2D textures. Yeah. 
helps a lot more when you can paint straight onto the model. What was your inspiration behind this wearable? It's really cool. Yeah, were uh, you this... like watching Wally? -E? <laughs> Uh, it does. It does remind me a bit like that. But you know, it's just the CCTV cameras just took my inspiration for a bit, and then I thought, yeah, what about something a robot with CCTV heads? Yeah, it's like thought, patrolling around. I like it. Uh, I'm keeping on keeping. <coughs> yeah, I have a question mm. about wearables. Yeah, sure. The um. A feature like animating animations within the world is that available yet or not? We are currently no. not allowed to do that. Uh, we will soon. We will soon. Yeah, I I imagine like you see the the three heads on the robot like having like a little eye moving inside a little lens, yawn or something. Yeah, cool. One of them. Um, one wearable does move actually there's like this prank ski or the box head have you guys seen that that it one blinks. moves it blinks in game i don't know if i'm just tripping the fuck out but i swear <laughs> to god that one blinks in game when the player is moving i'll have to i'll have to check that then because yeah i just got onto the wearable curation team so i can go in and look at that but yeah we're supposed to be able to do it soon um, and then yeah. I actually have another question about uh, this old wearable, these um, retro glow shoes that I currently have a couple of. Will those ever glow again? Um, they they're currently yeah. still fixing it. Oh, I see, I see. Because I remember DCL was kind of yeah. messed up for a bit, but those are still one of my favorite shoes that I own. Yeah, they're still fixing yeah. the issue. Like, my wearables got done... Um, the other, uh, like, uh, the other month, like, month ago or something. Oh, look at the bag head. Wow. This is amazing, dude. Uh, thanks, man.